that the iPhone 11? It is. How do you like it? You know, I love it. <laughs> What's up, sous chefs? Today we are trying something a little bit different. I'm introducing Eating with the Eaton to the new segment that we have on our channel where we gather with friends and family over a great meal like you guys are used to. And we just have a little discussion. We just have a great time enjoying food and great conversation. So welcome to episode one. So for our first episode of Eating with the Eatons, we have the kitchen. Hello. <laughs> and then, I'm Ron. Oh, hey. I'm Ani. <laughs> yes, and as you guys know, um, this is my husband, Jason. You might remember him as being Mario. Um, <laughs> I would say also known, aka Mario. Yes, it might be more. You never know when he's going to pop up. He's so available, you know? Mm -hmm. He's a second cast member <laughs> in the house at all times. <laughs> Um, so today we decided to gather over this amazing Korean feast. Uh, we have, I don't know what the proper name for this chicken is, but banchan chicken, soy garlic, fried chicken, rice cakes, pork belly, marinated beef. And we are really just about to get into this because we is hungry. <laughs> Jason's going to be grilling up for us today. He's grill master. Grill master. Look at that. Right. Pork belly on the grill. <laughs> Give me one of those, too. Oh, we got it. guy, he's just... He's like, right, just shut me down, like, nah. right? <laughs> we ain't doing that. Next up, we got some beef grilled up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad you remember that. Right. 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 Really good stuff. Yeah. That's the one right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's Cucumber kimchi. You got something to scoop that out with? Yeah. We are not prepared. <laughs> that looks so good. I don't even know what it is. Pork belly. Uh oh. <laughs> And now it's beer battered. <laughs> All right, let me. Just... So we, we need a GoPro so you can do the around the mm. table thing. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, now you can eat. Who's first? That is first yeah, always. Uh, what do you cook? Best. Breakfast. <laughs> breakfast, 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 at, at 7.30, 8, 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, all the creative recipes that I found have this the bread. I brunch. So, I'm probably not going to get up that early. Today. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. I can do but more I mean, of I think brunch for, for his brunch, I think we were pretty creative. Because I've already got my good. sleep in the night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed right now. <laughs> I can Go see how he ate 20 he pieces. Ate 20 pieces. <laughs> Still just shaking the doors. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's starting. It's all I have. I have a thing about wings. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's almost gone. <laughs> it's making more wings on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Probably not deep, though. That's that big baby. Oh, man. Okay, so what's the sauce? What is this? Gizamer? Mm -hmm. Rice vinegar? Okay. We have that. Go to your tank. Go to your tank. Go to your tank. Okay. Okay, I got you. You want me to make it? Yeah. <laughs> you felt that? I, mean, I felt that I too. That's what happens. <laughs> the subtleties of 30 years. 32 years. <laughs> <laughs> What's in that? 
I'm not listening, but... <laughs> That's actually the perfect segue for our conversation with Dina. We have a lot of full bellies. I think we're all kind of just picking off um, the last couple of delicious bites. So today's conversation is just a quick spin-off of 30 for 30, right? So our friends here, Ron and Ani, oh, are hey. doing 30 years of marriage. And I know I just popped up on you guys, married and everything like that, but we've only been married for 30 weeks. So that is the 30 for 30. Um, and we're just talking about love, relationships, and marriage at 30 weeks and 30 years. Run. <laughs> Not after this chicken. <laughs> I got this a lot. Oh, my own weakness. <laughs> And the pesto chicken. Mm -hmm. Chicken? Did you say pesto? <laughs> He's like pesto so chicken. Mm -hmm. Man, you know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> That's how we got here. Is that done? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not the paper. Not this one. Oh. That's going to take a little bit. Big baby. Mm -hmm. What you have for lunch today, Jason? <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> and the only one left is what, Jason? What's his name, Jason? Big baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. had to sound like you have a deviated symptom. Trials and tribulations of the grill. You can't even say the C word anymore. The rice cakes are like one they're of They're so hot, they're good. They're spicy like, and sweet and delicious. They remind me of um, <clears throat> wasabi. That's why I brought it up. Oh, you going to do the volcano and stuff? I'm not. Because oh, okay. <laughs> I will make a huge mess. I will make a huge, huge mess. Not. So when you're eating, um, <laughs> breathing fire, but you just like, again, do it again, do it again, do it again, give me smoke. Mm -hmm. So, mm. the viewers want to know, and since you are a guest, we can start with you guys. <laughs> In 30 years of marriage, what has been the most eye-opening thing that you've learned about your spouse? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay. Come to the camera. <laughs> She's a comedian. Drops mic, walks away. You are, you're freaking hilarious. Oh, no, I have to be funny, thank you. No, you don't have to be funny. <laughs> I think you're funny. You have a very... Um, <clears throat> it's dry, but yet it, it's very um, educated, and, and she knows a lot of words. So if you don't know a lot of words, you just be like, huh? Wow. <laughs> so. To might go over someone's head. Way ah, over. Okay. And you'd be like, ha, okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And so why was that eye opening? Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Siri, you girl, girl. So, you have to answer the question. What is the most eye-opening thing? <laughs> eye-opening, wow. Mm. Be so many things. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um... I think the thing that comes to mind, the first thing when you asked that question, was under pressure, he's like laser focused. Was that before or after I started wearing glasses and I couldn't <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm the comedian. <laughs> <laughs> he's the funny here. <laughs> No, I have a story. Should I tell the story? I'd like to hear it. Here There's a couple of stories, but I, I'll tell them. Tell them. Okay, so we were on the road because we are always traveling or driving somewhere. But this was back in, it was like 2003, I think, 2004, driving from Huntsville to Savannah. 
Um, and we have this thing about mattresses on the road because it seems like whenever we're on a road trip, there's a mattress and it somehow manages to cause problems. Uh, this particular night, yes, this mattress falls off this truck and this guy on a motorcycle just happens to be coming up as the mattress falls off the truck oh, no. and the motorcycle flips over the mattress, the guy falls, you know, oh, wow. he, the motorcycle goes one way and the guy goes yeah. the other way. And no lie, he pulls over. We're on the highway, not the street. There's no stoplights. He pulls over, makes sure that we're in a safe place, jumps out the car, and starts directing traffic so that nobody runs over this motorcyclist. And that was crazy. I, I mean, we had been married at that time probably over 10 years, maybe. Almost 15 years at that point. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. like. I don't know, do they train you to do this? It's like, where do you learn to do that? Because most people would panic in that situation. You know what I mean? And they wouldn't put themselves, because, you know, you could have been run over. You really could have. And he saved that guy, you know? And the crazy part about it is, is he got back in the car and drove off. Like, there was no, like, hang around for somebody to congratulate you or whatever that you saved this person. He just made sure he was safe. And then, so, yeah. That probably was, yeah. You know, you yeah. So you impressed me that night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a hero. You were a hero. Oh, yes. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're up. Right, me. <laughs> My turn. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Same mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And the question is again. Well, now since we've mm -hmm. only been married thirty weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, in your 30 weeks of being married to me, what has been the most eye-opening thing that you've learned about me? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can use every answer. <laughs> I was okay. thinking, I mean, Girl, she, 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 she is hilarious. She is. Oh, she's hilarious, but I've already known that. Mm -hmm. So I can't use that as cheating. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this one thing that really um, opened my eyes since we've been married was how she has been able to <clears throat> prioritize what we have over just about anything else. Hmm. That was definitely eye opening. Back in, not even that long ago, um, while you were working at the Woodmore, at your last <laughs> location, yeah. um, you were pretty much, you were working a lot. Like, you were working 50, 60 hours a week, and I get off pretty late. I get off like 6, 7, and I remember one night I got home, it was about 7.30, she wasn't there and i'm like this i was calling her and i guess you're like really busy and then i saw her come in and i was like what what happened everything okay and you were just so tired but you were basically saying like you know i was like you don't have to cook anything relax chill and you're like no i want to cook for you because this is what we this is our thing like, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. And that, it hit home right there. I was like, whoa, okay. Well, we gotta figure something out so that she isn't feeling this way <laughs> or pressured to do that. Cause you should wanna, you know, wanna do it, but right. not that I gotta do this now. That becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was, yeah, definitely a very eye opening. And you were willing to do, do it all. It's Scorpio season, no but <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no time in the day at all, but she was willing to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So that definitely hit home. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. She's gonna cry. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> I would say the most eye-opening thing for me that I've learned about you in thirty weeks is, well, first of all, I'm a hot mess. 
<laughs> truly am a hot mess. I say wild things and I do wild things and all of that. And I am like daily more and more amazed by how patient you are with me because sometimes I get on my own nerves, you know? <laughs> and to see you just like always, you know, being right there, like, okay, well, what, what do we need to do? How do we, how do we fix it? How do we get to the place that, you know, how do we get to our goal state and everything like that? And you're always just right there, ready to help me achieve the dreams that I have. And that's like amazing. It's amazing. I guess if we have to do the classic, um, how do you make a marriage last for 30 years? <laughs> We're going to have to do some chop, chopping this one up. This is chopped and screwed. Let, let me, so, okay. <laughs> so, if you have, let's say if you have to name like one thing that has helped your marriage last for 30 years. No, seriously. <laughs> I'll say, um, I think back in 99, 1999, we had been married nine years, and then uh, my job would take me away, geez. Well, from 90 to 99, I was probably gone most of Half it. of that time. Yeah. yeah. It and seems then, like you know. And then after that, I got a hard, a hardship duty where I was there, but I wasn't at home. So they can come see me, have lunch, and then uh, they go back to work. Oh, wow. So um, we instituted date night. We did. And Before Michelle and Barack. By yes. Way. In, in 1999. <laughs> and I know. Before we didn't know who they were. Before we even knew who they idea. were. And they, they was dusty back then, so we didn't know. You can't I say that. Pictures. This is so going to be on the internet. I don't care. Well, they glowed up now. They're beautiful. <laughs> Great. But we want to be friends with them, so <laughs> don't call them dusty. They're beautiful. So we were dusty, but we are awfully we were shiny <laughs> now. Come on now. When we came up with date night, date mm -hmm. night kind of changed the dynamic of our relationship because we kind of started over and began to date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sure. To actually date again, and I actually began to court her again. Like I would get off work. I would get dressed, and then she would get dressed. We would get a babysitter, and then we... Well, actually, how did date a, night start? Remember how date night uh, started? The, what, the kids went had practice or games? They had a, they just instituted the skating yeah. at the youth center. Yeah. And they were both in elementary school. Yeah. And it was Friday night. So we got three four hours nice. where oh, we wow. could we just went to the movie sometimes we just sat at home and watched the movie just but before netflix and chill we just <laughs> right out, just like whoo but so that became our time because that we had a dedicated mm -hmm. place to take the kids and then i mean it cost money and money was tight then but we made it work yeah like if I had to have a peanut butter and jelly, yeah, they ain't going to the skate <laughs> <They're going laughs> <to> the <skate laughs> I don't think to this day they know why we were so like happy about skate night. <laughs> and we still do date night for the most part. Yeah. To this day, you know, it's not always Friday nights now. Yeah. Sometimes it's other nights. But. Yeah. Makes you appreciate what you have, mm -hmm. and you know, I was always told, you know how you got her, continue to do that. So date night, yeah, date night, and we share the same. And too. not a king size bed. Yeah, we switched to a king size bed because we got fat. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you went down. You went. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. Six years ago, we switched to a king size bed. Gotcha. From we needed from a queen. Gotcha. We had a queen all those years. Gotcha, gotcha. And we were like, we need a king size bed because we we were. Yeah, so we I, were, I, I we got pretty, fat, actually. We both did. We were chubby. No. It was too much space between us. Really? Yeah. So now we're back to a queen. There's no way I can put a barrier in between because there's no space. <laughs> oh, man, this chair is moving. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> How have we stayed married for 30 weeks? <laughs> man, it's 
pretty fresh. It's still pretty new. We're still Ooh. learning more and more about each other. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's just so close to, you can't really forget anything. So you just, our vows and everything, we just keep that strong. We just, we treat this like, you know, you're my best friend, so. Aww. As long as you keep that, I think that's important. If you stop being friends, I don't know what you can do, but as long as you're friends in the first place, it just works. So. Say no, say. No. <laughs> well, what, what makes you, no, what makes you no, want no, to no. keep going from here? That's probably mm. the, you know, what makes you want to keep going? Like you're here now. Yeah. Um, it's like a good wine, you know? When you crack open your favorite wine, you know that you like it right now. Like you might even love it right now. But we all know, just it's just facts. It's just facts that the longer a wine sits, the better it gets. So I think, uh, you know, knowing how good it is right now and seeing the way that we like we're able to communicate effectively and you know learn each other's problem solving styles and all of that just makes it seem like such a dream down the line and all of the things like even you know our united legacy like we always talk about legacy with each other and what we want to build and what we want to not just leave for our kids but our grandkids and generations to come mm -hmm. and um focusing on that and just like you said maintaining that friendship but also what we have planned together it's so like how can you how can you even consider not seeing it out we gotta talk about the legacy legacy, legacy. phantom yeah let's talk about legacy <laughs> what is your Panda, legacy Panda, what is your legacy no no what's your legacy <laughs> when I say your I mean your as well yes our legacy. Well, given our backgrounds that we had as we became this one entity together, I think what our legacy, what's it going to show? It's going to show the best characteristics of the both of us. Um, like Susan, she has a very artsy background and she wants to be able to give back to the community in more of like a performing arts type center. And I have more of a technology engineering background and I want to help our kids that look like us show that, hey, you can do this stuff. You can be the next Bill Gates. You can be the next Steve Jobs and stuff like that. You can be that. Like, you don't have to play ball. You don't have to do this right. Right. You don't have to do that, no. Like we're so much more than that. So I think our legacy will be us combining all that together and showing the world that, you know, we're so much more in this thing and we're providing this platform and opportunity for everyone. How did you know that this was going to be your person? How do you know? He has a much better story for this than I do. He's like, Dad. So, look, <laughs> seriously. So, when I was 11, I met this lady. She's the only white lady in my neighborhood. So, she was a Christian. And she used to teach, like, Sunday school Bible study. Oh. I used to hang out with her and uh, study the Bible. Mm. But I didn't go to church. So, it was cool. She was like, whatever. And so, I teach you about God. I was like, okay, cool. So we learned the Bible and we started praying and I prayed, I don't think I was 11. And I told God, I said, God, if you send me someone to love me and to never leave me, I'll give my life to you. And when I was 18, I had, I hate to say this, two or three other girlfriends, but I met her I met her, and then probably that next week, I was like, 
yeah. <laughs> so that's how I knew. Because I couldn't, I, those other ones couldn't, didn't give me what I was looking for. Not at all. Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't make the, the hairs on the back of my neck and eyes <laughs> when, when I communicated uh, with them. They were just like, uh, so I had to have uh, someone way smarter than me because uh, if I'm smarter than you, I'm gonna eat you up. <laughs> I'm gonna eat you up. So that's how I did. Her side is funnier. My, my side, my side was really personal. Really, but her, but her side concerns my brother. <laughs> well, that's how we met. Uh, he didn't go to the local school. He got bust out. <laughs> <laughs> he got bust, bust out. out. <laughs> but I grabbed his arm and I was like, don't go. Like, hang out. And so he stayed and he hung out, you know, whatever. And, you know, it just, I knew. Like, mm. I, was, I didn't know he was the one then, but I knew like I liked him and I mm. wanted to get to know him better. And um, so, yeah, he went to basic, he went to AIT, he came back and then he went to Germany. He was gone for two years and we had kind of gone our separate ways mm. for those two years. So when he came back to the States, he showed up at my doorstep. The day that I was moving, we were moving out of our apartment, he pops up at the door and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> what is this? Hello. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest thing because had he been even an hour later, he would have missed me. He wouldn't have, you know, I mean, I, theoretically speaking, I guess we could have found each other, but that was the strangest thing. Like he just kind of popped up and was like, hey, I'm back from Germany. And I'm like, wow, today? <laughs> no, yesterday. <laughs> you know, it was really, it was very strange. And we, like, have been inseparable pretty much mm. ever since. I don't really know how I knew. I just did. Because I told my mother when he went to Germany, I was like, I'm, we're going to, I'm going to marry him. We're going to get married. And okay, like, your turn. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was like a, a series of key moments that just fired off in the back of my head as I was interacting with her. And I think the first one was, um, I called her and she was kind of like irritated because I guess all her coworkers decided to call out sick on, you know, Mm -hmm. April Fool's Day, and she's trying to open the store. No, you know, kind of. We're talking on the phone for a while, just kind of feeling each other out, vibing and whatnot. And we went out on a date. Um, I don't know if this was the second or the third date, but we were on H Street in DC. We went. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you there? You make a face. Is that me? I'm like, I'm just I'm just trying to think where we would be on 8th Street on our third day. I put my own. That's U Street. That's why I was confused. Right. I got the shoes wrong. No, you good. We good. It was U Street. U Street. U Street. I put my it yes. was, we both yeah. got off real early mm -hmm. and we met up there and this was like before the after hours crowd mm -hmm. came in and we were just there talking about anything like and everything really, mm -hmm. everything and we yeah. went from politics to some really deep science stuff um, slightly conspiracy stuff mm -hmm. just stuff that people might not be ready to ever talk about mm -hmm. comfortably. And we were just doing that. Mm -hmm. No, not missing a step at all. <laughs> so that was one of the things, yo, I can talk to her about anything. Mm -hmm. And she's smart and she can keep up. Mm -hmm. And she surprises me. So I was like, oh, this is not normal. <laughs> no, this is not normal. Like, I don't know what this is, but it seems right. Mm -hmm. 
that was the first moment I'm like, this, this is a real special lady. Mm -hmm. I need to keep her close. And it just progressively got better. Just, but just from that, not knowing each other that well to even talk about some of the stuff we were talking about, mm -hmm. just, and it didn't feel forced. Mm -hmm. It felt just right. Like I've known you my whole life, but I just met you. So that's all I needed to know. Uh, it's real easy for me. It's real easy. Uh, let's see. I guess we were probably about dating for about three months at this point. And I think, you know, I work on my feet eight hours a day, just trudging along in these streets of beans. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, I was at the house, I forgot, your house or my house? Yes. I don't know, we were at somebody's house, right? And we were just chill. Okay, so I had just got off work and my feet hurt so bad, like so bad. And I'd always have this thing about my feet, like one time, one of these teachers at band camp, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> wasn't at band camp, um, but one of my like leaders or whatever, um, I went to their house one time, I took off my shoes and she was like, ew, your feet stink. <laughs> and she was like, ew, your feet stink. You either gotta put your shoes back on or you have to go home. And I was like, have a nice day. Peace like, out. you're not gonna disrespect me and think I'm gonna stay and put my, no. <laughs> um, so it always been kind of like a thing for me because I know like after you have you work a long day sometimes sometimes your feet don't smell great because mm -hmm. that's normal that's <laughs> right right you come home and you take a shower right um but my my feet were hurting so bad like I could just barely sit down and I just saw a moment to just throw it out there and I was just like. <sighs> And I really wanted to see what his reaction was because it was it was really a test. It was like, okay, if he tells me my feet stink, then we're done. <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. And so I just was kind of like, oh, my feet hurt. You will you rub my feet? And I looked at him like, will you rub my feet? <laughs> and there and he was like there was no like turning his nose mm -hmm. up or mm -hmm. anything like anything about what I asked him in his response. There was nothing in his response that was like selfish, right. you know, like he recognized that I would had a really long day mm -hmm. and that the best thing that he could possibly do for me at that moment would be to rub my feet, even though they probably did stink. I don't know. You can ask him. <laughs> Shake your head yes or no while I'm not looking <laughs> in the camera. Um, it did not. But I, he he took my took my shoes off, took my socks off, and gave me like this incredible foot massage. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. I could get really used to this. Mm -hmm. And literally, um, you know, I think we went to go get dinner or something after that. And he went home. And I called my girlfriends on three way. I said, ladies, I'm gonna marry this. Woman. <laughs> Just like that, because it was just, it was such a selfless moment. Right. I knew that if we were just in a place where we were constantly giving to each other, that neither of us would be lacking. And so when I saw that selflessness in him, I was just like, "Yeah, that's me." Did we do good? That was great. That was great. <laughs> just so you know, the food was amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad I liked it too. <laughs> He's glad you liked it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on this first episode of Eating with the Eatons. Um, it's been an incredible meal and conversation here with my honey, Mr. Eaton, and the kitchen's family. Oh, hey. hey. Yeah. Right, yes. <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> 
we've had an incredible time just hanging out with them and chatting and i can't wait to do it again with new guests please if you guys will go ahead and drop some comments down in the comment section let us know what you loved about this video and if you have any questions for our next episode feel free to leave them right there and as always thank you guys love you so much ciao